Hey guys, another multiplayer tutorial for you. This tutorial is describing how to use my multiplayer plugin across a network. Now, uh, be aware that if I have left a bug in my code, which I don't believe I have, then this won't work. But um, most of the time, the issues that you guys will be experiencing will be to do with port forwarding. So let's just sort of talk about that for a bit. Basically, the way in which the internet was devised when it was first created, it ran off a simple um, uh, it ran off a simple structure, and it wasn't designed for many PCs. It was really just a university um, context at first before it hit the general public. And we all used the system, the IPv, uh, I think it was IPv1 or IPv2 that we used. And <clears throat> this history is important because it describes the way in which people thought about the computer. Basically, the IPvP protocol. I can't even speak, but the, the protocol used for uh, allocating IP addresses to computers is limited within a certain parameter because an IP address, a typical IPv4 address, which you think of as the um, uh, 192.168.0.1, for example, for my local router, that is uh, a series of characters, and the maximum size of an IP address, IP, IPv4 address, is 3. Um, three, three, and three. So the maximum number of combinations there are is three times three times three times three. And uh, well, it's not quite like that actually because it's um, there's I think there's a combination of ten characters, no, ten possible numbers per um per field. So it's basically ten to the power of nine. Um, yeah, no, no, not ten to the power of nine. Sorry, ten to the power of twelve. So there's quite a lot of addresses, quite a few addresses. But if you think about the internet as a whole, there's a lot of computers connected, and there will be a point whereby, because people aren't removing old IP addresses, and we're always creating new ones, and you'll end up with more IP addresses than there are, or more computers than there will be IP addresses. And at that point, you'll have a problem, because IP addresses are the foundation of everything. So we came up with this new system called the IPv6 system, which uses um characters and numbers and it's 4444 four, 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 rather than 3333. Three, three, three. So there's a lot more space and a lot more space per character inside the um, address. Now before we had IPv4 or IPv6 rather we use the I concept of a bridge or a NAT and what does NAT stand for? Well NAT is Network Address Translation and what this means is that you can have multiple computers on multiple different connections uh, under one IP address, and they all connect through maybe a hub or a router, which is the case with all of your home computers. Every single one of your home computers will have the same remote IP, unless you have an interesting custom setup, which you'd like to describe. Um, and the way in which they are differentiated from each other is the port in which they communicate across. However, typically the internet port for a website is port 80. When you encounter NAT, port 80 is actually remapped to port 80 on the other computer, but it doesn't mean that when you call port 80 on the NAT, it will direct to port 80 on the computer. What this means is that whilst locally all the ports are mapped port 80 to the internet, uh, or port, is it 980? I can't remember. Uh, and then port X to, to for a certain program, externally that port will be different. It might be your external IP and 500 port is mapped to port 80 on X machine. Long story short, it means that whilst <coughs> externally to locally, there's a confusing, it's like trying to shake someone's hand, you can't see them. So you never know what connection you're actually trying to connect to until you receive a response from that person, because then it sends their address. So in order to circumvent this uh, inability to contact someone on a port, because it's actually a different port number, um, we use something called UDP punch through, uh, as well as port forwarding. So what are the two things? Well, port forwarding is a very simple concept um, that somewhere along the line you have to be able to talk to someone with because you know their address. So the server is typically port forwarded, meaning that externally when you connect to the server port on the server's IP 1200, it will actually map to the local server on its LAN as 1200, and thus on the machine as 1200. Meaning that you can actually uh, talk to the person you're actually trying to find. Um, and that's where we need to do port forwarding, which is part of this tutorial. The second bit about UDP, UDP punch through is the concept that for peer-to-peer -peer networking, if you want to connect client X to client Y, um, and they're both behind network address translation, it can be very hard to actually communicate to them. Because 
client X will talk to client Y and try and connect, and it knows that client Y's program is running on port 1200 because it's the same program. Thus, it will connect to client Y's external IP on port 1200. However, when it tries to actually send any data, it's sent to the NAT or network address translation of port of client B at port 1200, and it's remapped to another address. So you can't talk to they can't talk to each other. So what they then use is a port forward intermediary server, and what happens is as follows: the client talks client A wants to talk to client B. So client A sends a request to the server to talk to client B. Client B will at some point talk to client the server and store its credentials, meaning that uh, it will communicate through its external port, the port that it wants to receive data on, and send, a, and send let's say, a hello message to the server. This sends the server two things. Firstly, the contents of the packet and also the header it was received from. And this header will map to the port on the trans that was translated on the network address translation. And NAT tends to keep a port open for a few, I'm not sure how long it is, a few hours, a few days, until it closes it, uh, until the program is closed or something like that. So this means the server now knows how to talk to port B and client B and also how to talk to client A because they both use the external um they use their program receiving ports to send the data. So then all it does is the, client, the server then sends to client A the credentials of client B directly, and thus the client can then talk to the um, other client without the server, and the server's role is finished. And that's what a matchmaking server tends to do. But for now, we don't actually need to know anything about that, so I don't know why I really told you. Um, port forwarding. Let's set up a simple scene, use my add-on, and we'll see how this goes. And I don't really know why I'm like this, because I didn't. Um, so we have... My add on. This is the latest one, 1.6.1, 1 .1, uh, just mainly bug fixes. And you click host game. Now, I will try it and, and finish this so that you don't have to, so that it will always prefer host game over play game. But for now, this is you have to only run it in one instance of Blender. So toggle the system console and press P and then minimize. And you'll see that it says server is initialized on 1200 and the manager is initialized on 1201. Then what we need to do is find ourselves. A, uh, another instance of Blender. I'm just trying to remember whether um, how I've done this because it's been such a long time since I've used my add-on. <laughs> would you believe? Um, so where's it gone? Game engine. Enable my multiplayer add-on because I don't have it installed by default. It conflicts with my other multiplayer systems. And then we'll create a play game instance, etc., and do all the position plugins and so on. This is common sense. It doesn't require any any knowledge, or it shouldn't do. Uh, and that's fine. And if we play it, it will actually connect, as you see on here. This is fine over over your um, current PC, but when you do it over LAN or externally, it doesn't work. And why is this? Simply, the same port forwarding idea. This client will try to talk to the server on port 1200. But the problem is that port 1200 is actually remapped on the network address translation to a different port. So how do we ever circumvent this? Well, we have to tell the server, or tell the... Um, the firewall or NAT of the server that anything received on port 1200 should be sent to port 1200 on this PC. So we need to go into our, our router and log into router typically 192.168.0.1 as an IP address and log in with your credentials, sometimes admin password will be your, admin, uh, your username and password. Now look at your, I have something called firewall rules but you may have a tab called port forwarding or firewall. Now you'll see, I've got to re-log in, you'll see that on firewall rules, we actually um, have all my firewall rules here, and we need to add an inbound service. And the problem is, if I click add, I have to type in a rule, but in this case, the rule is unlikely to exist, except for the fact that I've already created mine. So we click cancel and go to services, and we add a custom service, give it a name, let's say multiplayer, uh, set the protocol to UTCP and UDP, because it offers the best compatibility. Uh, and start port end port. Now, theoretically, you should only only need to add port 1200 because the listener is what manages receiving connections on. However, because we may end up with problems later on, you need to have the start port is 1200, and the end port is 1201. And click apply. I'm not going to because I've already done it. And then go to firewall rules, and then add a new inbound service, which I've set to multiply because I've already created it. Always allow any incoming action and send it to the LAN server with the IP of the, of the server who of the client sorry the IP of the um, local PC on your LAN and typically static IPs will help prevent this IP from changing and you're done and you apply the rule 
This means now that your server can talk to any client externally and internally. In addition, any local firewalls should be enabled to receive the connection. Uh, sometimes I turn mine off just because it's easy to test, but I wouldn't leave them off for too long. And this concludes the tutorial, to be honest, guys. There isn't anything more to it. If you do run into troubles, um, send me your test files and I'll try and see if I can get, get around with them.